that makes it safe, can open. They can get underway. They don't need to do it. It ain't going to fall down. It's a wooden building. Right. Cool. All right. Welcome back. Um, there's been a lot of uh, discussion over the over the tea break, and um, because we are very keen for the um, for the hall to get uh, reopened, and without waiting for further analysis and and costings, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, we want to go with the staff recommendation, which is to get it to 67% at a total cost cap at 624. So. Um, Andrew Turner's going to move that motion. Um, Yanni Johansson will second. And um, I'd like to open it up for debate, Andrew. Thank you very much. Now, um, first of all, I'd like to thank the um, three people that came and made deputations this morning. Um, very moving deputations with a, a lot of information in there that certainly leave councillors in no doubt as to the value of this facility to the um, Akaroa community, in fact to the, the communities of Banks Peninsula, um, and also in no doubt as to community involvement and community passion about this facility over a very long period of time. I think it's fair to say that had the community um, not got involved in the gaiety, we may in fact not be having this discussion today because it, it may not have survived until the earthquakes. So um, the gaiety is one of the top 30 identified facilities rebuild projects, so it has been prioritised. Um, and as I say, we've heard today um, in the, the two impassioned deputations the value this facility has to the community and the um, level of community involvement in getting this, this much-loved facility to the state that it was in um, prior to the earthquakes, to where it was prior to the earthquakes. Um, the repair of the gaiety, as I alluded to earlier, needs to also be taken in the context of the fact that this is the only facility in Akaroa which is capable of hosting larger community events. And, of course, in a tight-knit rural community, those community events and a space to have um, weddings and gatherings and, and community events, performances, other occasions are very, very important. Um, the facility has been well used, as we've heard, um, and is, is much, much loved by the community. Akaroa has also suffered um, loss or damage to a number of other community facilities, a number of which are um, closed at the moment, including the post office, um, the council service centre, the information centre, and a large part of its museum, which to date has, has been unable to open fully. Um, I refer councillors in the report to the relative portion of the figure, which is for deferred maintenance, um, and also to the likely insurance recovery. Um, in my view, this is our opportunity to send a very strong message to the community of Akaroa and the communities of Banks Peninsula um, that we respect um, the involvement that they've had in the, the restoration of the gaiety prior to the earthquake, um, and that we share their desire and their passion to save it. Um, it certainly sends a very strong message that we involvement. We understand the, the value of facilities to communities in general, but in particular um, to these small rural communities. So I urge councillors today um, to support the urgent reinstatement and repair of the gating. Thank you. Thanks. Um, look, I'll keep this relatively brief because I think my line of questioning really covered um, my main points around this. Um, the one thing that I do want to say, though, is, is that the NBS can be very misleading. People have, I, I don't know whether it's through our exam systems or whatever else, we, we seem to look at 100% and think that, that that's sort of a mark. 100% or anything less is actually not necessarily a good indication of safety. This doesn't have a brittle collapse mechanism. It didn't come down uh, in, in the September earthquake or the February earthquake. It probably isn't going to. 25,000 earthquakes later, it's still standing. I tell you what, it is a stunning building. It's absolutely beautiful. Entirely agree it is the jewel in the crown for Akaroa, and it's incredibly important to the community on the peninsula there. Um, look, the code today is actually safe. Most public buildings and commercial buildings that have got a heap of people in them right now are at 34% of code, perfectly safe. May I also say that 67% of the current NBS is 100% class code. Um, the only other point that I'd make too is that 
look, as a council and as an organisation, we need to be uh, being really tight around the finances here, and I do worry about precedence. Talking of jewels in the crown, we've got Motorvale coming up, one that I entirely think is a jewel in the crown for Christchurch. Uh, bring it 67% of code, it hasn't come down as, as of yet anyway, it was still standing, and 67% of code is perfectly safe, which is, as I said, 100% of the old code. So I, I do worry about precedence there. What I do want is certainty and to move ahead as soon as possible. I back this place, I'm sure the council backs this place, I know the community does. So um, we've got some certainty and we can move ahead. So I'd urge you all to support the resolutions and we can, um, we can pop along to the opening, hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I support uh, the staff recommendation. The reason is not only this uh, uh, kind of the uh, heritage the building, but also it's a public community the building. Especially we heard uh, from the two representative of the community, and this this the building actually is, is a central part, a key part of Ekora area, but actually is part of the Christ Church. Another one is uh, the sixty-seven and the hundred percentage. But I consider the time is still important. If I with the hundred percent, the whaler is definitely the six hundred seventy-five k. Then we we probably lost the, it. Take another, I don't know how long. And also the key issues in here, we all aware this one of uh, uh, top thirty. The council approve the community facility. This facility is. We all went through the community consultation and community board consultation. In that time, we all aware that's high, urgent, and important. So the timing is very, very important. But this, this, this building, I'm aware the staff done a great job because I reviewed the paragraph 4.6 in here. In December of last year, they just done the, the MBS assess assessment only take two months. They can bring all this information to council table. They are amazing. It's quite beyond belief. If we compare some other the top 30 the, the project or the facilities, since September 2012 up to now has been the six months. Still quite a few, not yet bring to the council table. So this is very good the, model, good example, you know, we can follow. You know, so that's why the, I support the staff recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I do wish to speak in support of this uh, resolution that's being put. I, I do need to make the point that on heritage buildings, often the percentage of code can be a little bit misleading. and. If you take Mona Vale, the reason that you don't go to 100% at Mona Vale is because you actually damage in the intrinsic heritage value of that facility. Not, not because um, it's a cost issue, but actually because it's a heritage issue and therefore you, you destroy a heritage building by, by doing so much work to it if you go up to that 100%. So it's a very much a different debate than, than this one. But the gaiety is something I think that has been prioritised by the previous council. It does need action in terms of getting a decision to go ahead and get it fixed. As Chair of the Community and Recreation and Culture Committee last term of Council and as Chair of the Community Committee this term, I'm really supportive of us proceeding. We did ask that we get these reports on facilities ahead of all the information from our insurer because we need to have progress happening nearly three years on after our major event and we've still got facilities that are only now um, starting to be repaired. So we do need to keep progress going. We do need to spend money to do it. And we do need to make these buildings resilient going forward. There's no point spending small amounts of money now that cost us long term in the future bigger amounts. So I do support the work that's being done here. I do support doing the overdue maintenance. This is actually about fixing a broken heart, and when you hear the love and the effort and the passion that the community put into this building before the earthquake to turn it into that special and unique place, restore it to its former glory, I think it's, re it's a responsibility of Council now to do the same, given that it's three years on from the earthquake and the damage that has been done, and also the long overdue maintenance required. So I want to 
again echo the comments that were made in thanking the local community and particularly Dale and to the, the, the woman that you work with and the friends of the gaiety, the frogs, around the work that you've done in terms of just keeping the flame alive for the, this, this building being repaired. Um, in, in conclusion, I'll just say that we have to accept that our heritage program as a council has been working really well. Our, our staff uh, have been working with our heritage contractor and although sometimes things t seem like they take a bit longer, actually the, the, the delicacy with which they approach these um, uh, projects to ensure that they're put back as they should be, I think is really important. And I know that we have had good progress on our heritage facilities through the contractors that we've had and through the working relationship with the loss adjusters. That does differ from some of those other facilities that Councillor Chen was alluding to. Um, and so there are different processes within the big organisation that means sometimes other projects are taking a lot longer uh, or aren't coming as quick. But again, this was a priority project. I think the staff are responding to the committee's request to get action on this, and I think the community will be very glad to see the day that it reopens. and the Council meeting of the 19th of December 2013. Was it, what about the special meeting? Did we do that as well? It's a separate item. Okay.